into the geometry of this linear regression. Okay, this is a little bit harder, so I want to spend a little bit more time uh, there. So uh, let's talk about the geometry. Now there are a couple parts of the geometry. Uh, one is the projection, the other one is the minimum norm solution, and then the last one will be the pseudo inverse uh, perspective of the solution. Um, okay, so first of all, we want to understand some notion of uh, this uh, linear algebra. Uh, I'm going to define a notion called the linear span. Okay, hopefully you have taken the linear algebra course, you, you know what I'm talking about. If not, it's also not too difficult to understand. Uh, suppose you have, a, you, have, you have a set of vectors, A1 through AD, so they are the feature vectors. Okay, so in this A matrix, they're the feature vectors. Uh, I, I'm going to form a linear combination of all these feature vectors. All right, then, then, then I will define a set called a span uh, of, of A1 through AD. That would be the set that contains all the linear combinations of all these column vectors. Now you ask, well, wait, 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 why, are you, why are you interested in looking at these? Well, think about going back a little bit, okay, to the regression problem, where you have all these columns, they are the GRE scores, they are the GPA scores, and so on. And you want to find a regression coefficient, you want to say, I want to put so much emphasis on the GRE, typically not too much in our graduate admission, uh, but you want to put more emphasis on the GPA because it really matters, all right? Um, and, and, and so you want to look at the linear combination of all these uh, column vectors, and that's why we want to st uh, study the span of all these uh, vectors. Uh, then we ask, okay, what, uh, uh, now you have the span de defined, can you give me an example? Well, it's very simple, you have, if you have uh, R3, okay, you have a three-dimensional uh, vector space, okay, they're all real numbers, uh, any independent uh, vectors, these three vectors, they can span the entire uh, R3. Okay, uh, they do not need to be orthogonal. Uh, even they are they, they, they are like this, uh, you are fine. Okay, uh, but the third case is not because then because two the, the two vectors that I'm showing you here they're parallel. One is the opposite of the other, so they do not they do not span the entire R three. They only span R two. Right. So this is notion of a linear span, and and so the geometry of this linear regression is as following. Uh, you, you, you imagine that there is a space, okay? It's a flat space. And in this space, uh, it contains all the A vectors you have, okay? And in this space, what, what, what does this space contain? It will contain all the linear combinations of all the, all, all, all the basis vectors I have. Alright? So, uh, think about in this picture I'm showing you here. Um, so you have, um, uh, 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 okay. I want to, um, Draw something here. All right. So um, think about what do you have. Well, you have you have a vector uh, a uh, one. You have another a two. So since we are only uh, in this in this diagram, I can only draw two uh, D. So let me restrict myself to the two uh, uh, vectors. And so um, now you have these two vectors, a one and a two. And you can start to ask, okay, uh, what are the possible linear combinations of all these A1 and A2? Well, uh, this one can be a linear combination of the A1 and A2. Just put the right number. Uh, this vector can also be a linear combination of A1 and A2. So you can eliminate all the possible uh, uh, vectors. That will give you a plane of uh, vectors that can all be spanned by the vectors A1 and A2. Now you can in generalize this idea to, to more vectors where you have A1 through AD, and that now it will be a d-dimensional space. So a linear combination of all these d-dimensional vectors will give you that space. So now I give you a vector y. The y is a, a, a observation. And that observation, of course, is not very happy with you, okay? And so the, the noisy vector will not live on that space. Okay? So this noisy vector is, is outside the space, and so you have you have a point here, that's your y. So what you're trying to do? What you're trying to do is to find the closest point on your plane, okay, such that that y vector can be closest to you. So what do you do? Well, you, you, start, to, you start to measure the distance between this y and any point on the plane. So you, let me ask you, uh, what would be the closest guy? What would this one be the closest guy? No, this vector will not be the closest guy because it's, it's, it's not perpendicular to the plane. 
so is this point. It's not perpendicular to the plane, so it won't be the shortest distance. So which one will be closest to the distance? Well, it, it has to be the one that is perpendicular to your plane. Okay? And linear regression, that, that magical formula with the A transpose A inverse, that kind of thing, is doing this. Do you see that? Right? So you, you give me a y vector, and then I will look for the basis vectors you give me, and then I want to find the best linear combination among all these AIs. Find one point, okay? This point is not necessarily A1 or A2. It would be a linear combination of A1 and A2. What would be the linear combinations? Well, that would be a linear, uh, that would be a co regression coefficient theta 1 and theta 2. These will be your solution. Okay? So you find this point, this point will be closest to your y, and they live in that span of your uh, vector space. Okay? Have that picture in mind, that explains what linear regression. Nothing more than that. It's just this simple picture. Okay, so I also define a thing called the R of A. This R of A is called the range space of A. It's also the column space of A. Uh, it says that it contains all the possible y hat such that y hat is uh, a, a theta. Okay, uh, in, in this case, of course, y does, uh, it doesn't live in this R A. Now, R A is really that plane. Okay, all right. So um, this slide summarizes a, key, a few key words that you can find in a textbook. Uh, uh, the, the first notion is called the error. What is the error? The error is your y subtract from your plane. Okay? So it will be y minus a theta. That's your error. And so in, uh, if you refer to my uh, drawing, then what is this e? Well, this e, this is your e. e equals to y minus a theta. That is your error. Okay? Now the error can be big, can be small. Of course, there is one error which is minimized. Uh, and so, according to this diagram, we know that the error is minimized when your when when your error vector is perpendicular to your plane. Right? This is called the orthogonality principle. Another keyword that you will find in many textbooks. Okay? So this orthogonality principle says that this e for this e to be minimized, it has to be perpendicular to your plane. So what does it mean? Well, I have a vector E, and then I know that all the vectors in this plane, they are linear combinations of A1, A2, A3, and A4, and so on. So I can do an inner product of this E transpose of your AJ. Okay, let's do an inner product between this E and the AJs. What will happen? It has to be zero, okay, because they're orthogonal. And this has to hold for all the j's. Right? Now, if it has to hold for all the j's, then that means this E transpose of a matrix that contains the A1, A2, dot, 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 A, a D, all these column vectors, they have to be a zero if each individual is zero. Do you get that point? Okay. And then now I can rewrite this equation as what? As just A transpose E equals to zero. All right? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so what? Well, if you have A transpose E equals to zero, then, uh, let me just write down the equation of A transpose E equals to zero, and I know that the E is just Y minus A trans, uh, 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 a, uh, a theta equals to zero, then what do I have? I have A transpose Y equals to A transpose A theta. That is the linear regression solution. Okay? So you don't have to take the derivative set to zero to get a solution. You can just draw a diagram, draw the plane, draw the line, and then perpendicular, you get the solution. You get the exact same solution as what we have, what we used to see using the, uh, the vector calculus. Uh, this equation is called the normal equation, another key words that you will easily find in a textbook. Uh, and then the, uh, 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 it's just a transpose a theta equals to a transpose y. Uh, now, if you want to get a predictive value, you just put the a matrix next to your theta hat, 
uh, then you will get a predictor value. That would be the expression. That's the, this is the third point in the slide. Uh, and then you can also look at the matrix now. The matrix now contains the inverse. And then on the left, you have an A. On the right, you have A transpose. This is called a projection matrix. What is it? Well, you go back to the previous diagram. Uh, this, uh, the, w what is the Y hat? The Y hat is this vector. This is your Y hat. Why? Because you have projected your Y onto the plane, and then that would be the best possible prediction that you can ever have. Okay, so there's a projection matrix, and since it is a projection matrix, uh, you don't need to project it multiple times because, see, once you are on that plane, no matter how many times you project, it will still be on the same plane. So you have this, the property that you multiply P with P, and it's still the P. Okay? Uh, and then the error, you can also define it using I minus P on the Y. Okay? Okay, so that is the notion of uh, the normal equation uh, the projection matrix and other keywords that you would normally find in a textbook. Okay, so what's next? Uh, let's also spend some time on uh, talking about uh, matrices uh, with, um, uh, with with different uh, 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 ranks. Okay. Any questions so far before I move on? Yes. Uh, the question is, is would the uh, would the a vectors represent the features? Okay, so uh, uh, here the a vectors they are given by you. Okay, so uh, they are predefined. They are the data matrix. So they are feature vectors. Okay, so a one would be uh, feature vector one. A two would be feature vector two. So in this linear regression problem, the a's are defined by the user. They are not optimization variables. Okay, so they are the feature vectors. Uh, the uh, the notion of this uh, 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 the thetas. Okay, so once you solve this problem, you get the thetas. So this theta will be uh, theta zero, uh, theta one, theta two, and so on, theta d. Uh, they are the regression coefficients. Okay, these are the regression variables. They are the optimization variables. Okay. Uh, more questions? Yes. Uh, how do you know if y is possible to be spent by the matrix? Whether it lies in the plane or not the plane? Okay, so the question is whether I know that y is uh, on the plane or not on the plane. Okay, so uh, can we check that whether y is on the plane or not on the plane? Uh, you, can, you can do this, you can solve this problem. If the error gives you is zero, then you're on the plane. Right? Uh, and so if I give you a data point, I give you a vector. I first I give you a vector. Uh, I want to know, okay, what, 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 what would be the, um, how, how does it uh, look like on this diagram? Of course you don't know because it's high dimensional vector. You cannot, you cannot see that. Okay? Uh, and so what you would do is that you solve the problem. Uh, if it turns out that, uh, y can really be expressed as the linear combination of A's, you will get zero error. Okay? Uh, typically, you cannot, uh, uh, especially when you have uh, a few columns, but you have many, many, many rows, okay? Because uh, then you will not be able to express all the possible y's. Uh, it would be a different case as what I'm going to talk about when you have an underdetermined system, which is a fat matrix. You have more uh, columns than rows. Then, in many cases, you can you can express your y in terms of the columns. Okay, so there are two different situations here. Okay, so since you're asking this question, let's talk about this overdetermined and underdetermined system. Uh, we, uh, so let's first assume that A has a full column rank. So, so if you look at this uh, matrix, uh, all the columns, they're independent. Now we, we have a slide talking about when, when some of the columns, they are dependent. So that's, uh, that's a more difficult problem. So for now, let's look at two cases. One's called the overdetermined uh, system, where you have a tall and skinny matrix. The other one is called the underdetermined system. There's a fat matrix. Uh, for different matrices, you have different solutions. Uh, if it is an overdetermined matrix, then the solution is A transpose A inverse A transpose Y. So that's the first equation. 
if it is an underdetermined system, it's a fat, uh, it's not a four, it's a fat matrix and a short matrix, uh, then you will get a, uh, you, you, you will shuffle the transpose and also the inverse. They're two different things. All right? Okay. So, uh, now if, um, A is an underdetermined system, then you can show that there exists a non-trivial null space. Now what is null space? Um, so for previously we defined the notion of range space, which is the set that contains all the possible uh, uh, linear combinations of the columns. Now if you have an underdetermined system, you have all these columns, then you have some redundant columns. They're guaranteed to be, to be, to be dependent on the previous k columns. Right? So, so I draw them in two different colors. So the, the blue colors, they are the independent columns, but then you have a set of orange columns. All these orange columns, they will form a space. It's called a null space. And in this null space, there's a very interesting property where, uh, if we take the, this A matrix multiplied with some theta, it will give you zero. And so the null space will contain all the possible thetas such that A theta is zero. Any fat matrix will have this property. Tall matrices, Yes and no, depending on whether the columns are independent or not. Okay? So if you have a null space, then you'll run into some issue, which is that uh, you have, you, you will, you will find a set of thetas such that a theta is zero. What does it mean? Well, it means that if theta hat is a solution, then theta hat plus theta zero is also a solution. Why? Well, it's because that, uh, if you look at theta hat, plus theta zero, and then you apply uh, at the A, all right, uh, and then you put a uh, bracket here, uh, you ask, can I find it to be a Y? Well, you will, you will get Y, and you will get zero, okay? And so if, as long as a theta hat is a solution, you add the theta hat with A theta zero, you will, you will get the same Y. So I give you one y, you will be able to find infinitely many possible thetas, which contains theta hat plus all these theta zeros. They will give you the same solution. Okay? So, so, so this is an underdetermined system, and this is not so nice. So what we can do is the following. Okay? So since you have infinitely many solutions, then we ask, uh, well, well, which one should we pick? Okay? Uh, so if A is a fat matrix and it has all the full column uh, rank, uh, by the way, the, the rank is defined as the number of independent columns in a matrix. Okay, and by independence, I mean that you form a linear combination. Uh, if you set it to zero, then all the all, all the linear combination weights has to be zero because they are they 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 they're independent. Okay, so that's just the definition of independence and also uh, rank. So assume that A is a fat matrix and it has full rank, then, uh, then of course, according to the null space definition, you will have infinitely many solutions that can, uh, that can make this A theta equals to Y. Or if you go back to this thing here, uh, if uh, I have Y here, I can find a theta hem, but any theta hem plus uh, this theta zero will give you, will give you the same Y. Okay, so you have infinitely many uh, uh, solutions. So we want to pick one that is unique. Then which one is it? Well, then you need to solve an additional optimization problem, which is that uh, uh, you want to pick the one with the minimum norm. Now, why minimum norm? Uh, because that will give you a unique solution. If you don't pick the minimum norm, you will still run into the trouble of having multiple solutions. So if you solve this problem, then you get a thing called the minimum norm solution. Okay, so some remark in the textbook. If you read the textbook, uh, linear regression is often referred to, to least squares. Okay, uh, if you read the signal processing textbooks, it's called the least squares. Uh, and then there is a thing called the minimum norm least squares. And where does this minimum norm come from? It comes from the fact that if you have a fat matrix, then you have a non-trivial null space. That means you have infinitely many thetas that can all make that system of the equation to be satisfied. And among all these infinitely many choices of solutions, you pick the one that has the minimum norm. That's why it is called the minimum norm least square solution. Is that clear? 
Okay, if you ever come across these terms, it means that. So pictorially, what I mean is the following. Uh, you have a, uh, so you can look at this diagram here. Okay, so you have a space that contains all the green arrows. These are the basis vectors. They're, they are the column vectors of your A matrix. And any uh, vector that lives in that space can be, can, can be a Y, okay? Um, so if you, have a ha if you have a fat matrix, and then you have uh, a null, uh, you have a non-trivial uh, null space, uh, you are guaranteed that your Y will live on that space. Uh, why? Well, it's because uh, the following thing. Um, you have, okay, it, 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 it's because uh, when, 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 whenever you have a Y there that is not living in, in, in your in our space, you can always create some uh, null vectors so that it will live on your space, okay? Or in other words, you can always find a solution theta hat to make A theta equals to Y exactly. Okay, so that's the, that's the problem of uh, the, the fat matrix. And so since Y lives on that space, and we know that there are multiple thetas that can make that to happen, so there's, there's a set of all the thetas. And among the set of thetas, you want to choose one that has the smallest norm. So then you can get a unique solution. So that is the picture behind a fat matrix case. Is it clear? All right. So now let's move on to something even more difficult. Okay, so now we have gone through the column matrix or the, the, the tall matrix, uh, which is uh, a full rank, and so you have very simple uh, solution. And then we talk about the fair matrix, where you have a null space you need to deal with. So now this will be the third case. It will be the most complicated case where you have uh, where you have columns that are dependent in your matrix. Now, why that will be the case? It happens all the time in your real data sets. Uh, you measure, you measure someone's, uh, 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 um, uh, GRE score, and then you also measure someone's, uh, uh TOEFL speaking score, and then you measure someone's IELTS, uh, speaking scores, and then you're all, you're just looking at the English, uh, uh, and score. Okay? And if you get one high, typically you get highs in the two other tests. Okay, and then, then, then you can create some kind of dependency between the columns. So if the dependency happens, then you will have uh, a set of independent columns, and then you have a few columns that are dependent. That will create a situation that I'm showing you on the left, where even that can even happen when you have a tall matrix. Um, and so if that happens, um, what, we ha what you should do is the following thing. Uh, there are two approaches. Approach number one is called the regularization which has something to do with your loss function, which we will talk about next time. That's approach number one. Approach number two is called a pseudo-inverse. What we do is to do a thing called a singular value decomposition, a thing that you are encouraged to look into a tutorial or not, you want to uh, look into some textbooks. Singular value decomposition of a matrix. So what it does is that you give me A matrix, I'm going to decompose it into three matrices, U, S, and V transpose. Uh, the U matrices, they have a dimension of N by N, and then they have a property that when you take the transpose of U times the U, you will get an identity matrix. Uh, how about the V matrix? It's a D by D matrix, a smaller matrix. You also have this orthogonality uh, uh, property. And then there's a diagonal matrix. Uh, you have an S. S itself is a rectangle matrix. It's, it's, it's like what I'm drawing you here. But then there is a diagonal block. Okay. In this block, you have a bunch of values, S1 to SR, and then they will all be zeros. Okay. Now, if, if all the columns of this A matrix, they are independent, then, then, then you won't get any zeros in your diagonal block. But since they are dependent columns, you will get the zeros in your diagonal block. So uh, if you do the singular value decomposition on your A matrix, decompose it, and then you write it in terms of this, then you can see a very interesting structure. Okay, uh, First of all, your U matrix, you will still get all these columns, but then there will be a, 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 a part that you don't really care. Why does it, why, why do you, why don't you care? Because in the S matrix, the, the S matrix, you have, you have some, some entries at the bottom, okay? They're here because you want to match the size of all these matrices. 
So you can ignore them. Uh, and then you also have the blue and the orange columns, okay? So they represent the columns that are really um, uh, the basis vectors for the, the A matrix. Uh, now I draw them uh, blue and orange. If you go to the diagonal block, you can also see the similar structure where you have non-zeros and then the zeros, okay? So that would be the structure of your singular value uh, decomposition matrix. So if you have a fat matrix and they are rank deficient, meaning that you have more, uh, uh, you have you have a non-trivial null space even in your column, uh, in your tall matrix, uh, then what you would do is to take the inverse of the non-zero parts of uh, of your diagonal matrix. Okay, so if you go to the equation there, you can see that I put a one over S1 and then one over SR and so on, and then a bunch of zeros. For the zeros, if you take one over that, you get infinity, and that's why you, you get things blow up, okay? And, and so this, this is called a pseudo inverse. It's not the full inverse, it's just the partial inverse. Uh, it's called a pseudo inverse because you take the inverse of the non-zero parts of your singular value decomposition, okay? If you do that, you can solve the rent efficient problem, and then you will get a solution uh, that, uh, that would be the, uh, the best fit for your linear regression problem, okay? Uh, same principle applies to the fat matrix. Uh, the fat matrix would be exactly the same thing. However, you, need, you want to have a different U matrix and different V matrix. That's the only difference. Okay. Um, okay. So here is the reading list for today's lecture. Uh, it is a very quick tutorial. Goes through uh, the typical notions of uh, linear regression, and uh, I would encourage you to take a look at. Uh, some of the classic textbooks on linear algebra, and then uh, a couple um, uh, chapters in the textbooks that you want to take a look, as well as a, a very well-written tutorial by Stanford CS229. Um, uh, you're also welcome to look at the tutorial of our own course. Okay, uh, There will be an appendix in this set of slides, which will show you um, why uh, what is, how do we solve that minimum norm uh, problem? So you're also encouraged to, to take a look of solving this con uh, constraint minimization problem using Lagrangians, okay? And then uh, we'll resume our class on Friday.